Welcome inside the Globe TV studios. And welcome to the second episode of Change Up Chatter. I'm very excited for this episode because we have some fun facts, highlights, a short recap of the Division Series so far, and predictions of the two squads headed to the World Series from the students of Goshen College. Now, Colin, how are you feeling so far about the Phillies and the Braves series? Well, I think that it is living up to the hype as far as how intense the whole series is. There's been a ton of crazy stats that have already come out in just the first three games. Bryce Harper absolutely doing his thing at the plate. Two home runs last night makes him the all-time NLDS home run leader. Plus, game two of the series was the first game in postseason history to end with an outfield-infield double play. Now, Lily, how about that bold prediction you made last week? <laughs> well, there definitely was a sweep, but the broom was definitely in the hands of the Diamondbacks, but I will get into that later. The division series is just heating up or cooling down for some teams. There's only one game that could possibly continue until Saturday evening. Colin, why don't you give us a brief recap of how the Rangers and the Orioles series is going? There isn't much of a series anymore because the Rangers decided to end the Orioles division run in just three games. Texas Rangers came out swinging in all three games to beat Baltimore. This division series was actually the first all year that Baltimore got swept. The Rangers starter Nathan Eovaldi pitched seven clean innings in the third game Wednesday night in another playoff clincher, only allowing the one and only run scored by the Orioles. The Texas bats were on fire with the Rangers scoring seven runs, five of them being in only the second inning. Three of these runs were from home runs hit by Corey Seager, Adolis Garcia, and Nathaniel Lowe. With the win, the Rangers have set themselves up to return to the ALCS for the first time in 12 years. Now, Lily, how about we take a look at that Houston and Minnesota series? Let me tell you, the Astros did their homework, came to win, and that is what they did. The Astros only allowed for the Minnesota Twins to take one game in the series, but in the end, the Astros sent the Twins back to Minnesota and head into the ALCS for the seventh consecutive time. The Astros were dominant with their pitching, and the stats showed. The Minnesota Twins struck out more than any team this year, and in this series, the Astros pitching staff struck out Minnesota batters 52 times. The Astros are set to take on the Texas Rangers in the ALCS in a Texas showdown fittingly nicknamed the Silver Boot Series. Colin, the championship series is beginning to look very exciting, but I'm sure most are already thinking about the World Series showdown. Most definitely. And before we get into our picks for the final two, Lily, you had the opportunity to talk with some Goshen College students yep. and ask them what their picks are to win the World Series. Let's take a look. Which MLB team do you want to win the World Series? The Braves. Definitely the Phillies. You know, I'm a Marlins fan, but I love the Bryce Harper for me, my opinion. Uh, Texas Rangers. Uh, the Detroit Tigers. Thank you. The Diamondbacks. The Phillies. Oh, obviously Atlanta. It's on the right answer. The Chicago Cubs. Bro, Diamondbacks all the way, baby. It was so fun to hear which teams GC students wanted to win, even though a couple weren't really in the bracket. Unfortunately, the Chicago Cubs and the Detroit Tigers are not in the postseason, <laughs> but I do love the team spirit. <laughs> Lily, how about we take a look at the division series with the Arizona Diamondbacks and your beloved Los Angeles Dodgers? <laughs> it pains me to talk about this series, but I will. The Diamondbacks swept the Dodgers in three games, contrary to my prediction, and they took the third and final game Wednesday night, 4-2, to two, sending the Dodgers back to L.A. All four of their runs came from four solo home run shots in the bottom of the third inning, making the Diamondbacks the first team in MLB history to hit four homers in a single postseason inning. The offensive lineup for Arizona showed up and showed out against the Dodger bullpen, and the stats showed. The starting pitchers for the Dodgers for every game in the series shared a combined 4.2 innings pitched, 13 earned runs allowed, a 25.08 earned run average, 16 hits, 5 home runs, 3 walks, and only 2 strikeouts. The pitching staff is what ultimately sent the Dodgers packing. The D-backs await for their opponent to be decided for the NLCS. Colin, last week you said you were most excited for the Phillies and Braves series. How about you fill us in on how that's going? I was very much looking forward to this series, and it's the only one that is going to play a game tomorrow and possibly Saturday. The Phillies and the Braves are headed into their fourth game of their NLDS series, with Philadelphia pulling ahead with a lead 2-1. Wednesday night's game allowed for the Phillies to break the tie in the series after beating Atlanta 10-2. And fun fact, Wednesday's game three was the first time all season that the Braves haven't been the favorite to win. Emphasis on all season. Phillies pitcher Zach Wheeler set a milestone in game two of the series by being the first player in MLB history to throw the first two innings of the postseason with six strikeouts and no walks. Lily, this division series has had its ups and its downs with some upsets and some pretty incredible matchups, but I think it's time that we share our picks 
for the World Series. I agree, but before we get to the picks, I think we should share our favorite fun facts of the Division Series. And I have to say that mine has to be that no American League East team won even a single game in the postseason. I mean, that is just insane. I completely agree, but my fun fact is that Ryan Presley, the Astros closer, in the fourth game of the Division Series, pulled off a perfect ninth inning, is now 13 for 13 in saves, and has 17 postseason appearances with no earned runs. Pretty good pitching performance. I mean, that is an amazing performance, unheard of almost. Now, Colin, I think it's time we share our picks, and I will go first because my pick was originally supposed to be a rematch of the scandalous World Series between the Dodgers and the Astros in 2017, but since the Dodgers are not moving on, I will change my pick to the Rangers versus the Diamondbacks. Now, Lily, I think that would be a very exciting matchup yeah. to wrap up the season. It's also pretty realistic the way that the D-backs have been slugging lately. Absolutely. For my pick in the final two, it has to be the Rangers and the Phillies. Mm. Aside from my anti-Astros reasonings <laughs> of wanting to see the Rangers win the ALCS, they have, I think, just one of the best overall lineups this year. Like Nathan Eovaldi on the bump, who's a Cy Young contender at the end of the season. And then you got Corey Seager, Evan Carter, Josh Jung, and Mitch Garver all hitting over 400 this postseason. Oh, they should be an electric World Series final. And the Phillies, I think, pretty much speak for themselves. I completely agree. And with that lineup and offensive stats for the Rangers, I'm sure they will give the Phillies a good run and a great matchup. That wraps up this episode of Change Up Chatter, but don't worry, we'll be back next week sporting new jerseys to fill you in on the championship series. We'll see you next week for more Change Up Chatter.